my soccer universe. Well, the round of 16 is history and I gotta say at least today I was not entirely to my liking. I knew that four teams were playing today where of each team I have a shirt um, and based on the shirts I wanted to end the games exactly the opposite way that they did end. However, I think it's the first time I'm wearing this Tunisia shirt which I actually really like, especially this crest is so much nicer than the one that they have. I don't mind the eagle but I mind the short wings of the eagle. Anyway, we'll talk Tunisia a little bit later. Um, first off we talk Mali against the Cote d'Ivoire. Um, you know, I do like both nations. I mean I was a little bit more for Mali because they have the best shirts at the tournament. Uh, and you know, I will, would like to wear my mud shirt a lot more uh, during the tournament. And I gotta say, for most of the game, Mali was the better team, although it was not a great game uh, that was played in Suez. Um, how can I characterize it? I think Mali had more of the game, uh, the Cote d'Ivoire had a little bit trouble controlling the game. However, um, they gave him away chances, but Mali did their best to not take them. I think I cannot say it any way else. I mean, there were times, and I'm watching Musa Marega. I mean, I know the first time I saw him for Porto, I, th I thought, wow, this is a powerful forward, a really dangerous striker. No, he's not dangerous at all. I mean, whenever they got close to the box, um, and I'm mainly talking Marega, if he gets the ball, he has a clear chance, he either doesn't take the shot, he hesitates, he wants to take an additional pass. It was frustrating to the nth degree. Uh, any chance that Mali had was botched in the most ridiculous manner. Uh, they should have been, if it, honestly, they should have been up at the half at least by a goal. Uh, they weren't. The Kotiwa hung in there. I mean, not necessarily playing bad, but they were not as much in the game as Mali was. Um, and then, yeah, second half, I think the Cote d'Ivoire got a little bit bad in the game. You could see Mali got frustrated. Mali uh, couldn't get any much going. And then the Cote d'Ivoire, I think around the 70th, uh, Jonathan Koja botched a chance Mali style where you just have to get the shot on goal. I'm sorry. Um, there it should have been wonderful, the call Cote d'Ivoire, and then they had a little bit, for just a little bit, the upper hand, and they take it. I mean, it was a free kick uh, from the goalkeeper that bounces up uh, in the air. I think, uh, yeah, just gets uh, at the box, bounces through, and falls to uh, Zaha, who just slams it into the net. I think, yeah, it, it bounced in front of Koja, uh, who didn't take it, and then he, Zaha is free, and he slams it into the net, 1-0. I have to say, it was not a deserved lead at that point. I think the signs were a little bit more towards Mali. However, Mali cannot get the equalizer anymore. Uh, it was, they tried, but again, at one chance, they just cannot convert this. And this is the big thing. Mali had one of the liveliest performances in the uh, group stage by beating Mauritania, for instance, 4-1. And you thought, yeah, they, are, they could do something. Nope. Uh, when they play against the big boys, uh, their strike force is absolutely dreadful. And I'm sorry, I won't be, nah, I will be wearing my Mali 4. I'm gonna start tomorrow my uh, FCON jersey review. Uh, so just let you know, and there I will be wearing a Mali jersey. My favorite jersey this year, absolutely. I'm a little bit gutted that I cannot wear it anymore, but maybe I use it as a proxy for Senegal. You know, I don't have a Senegal shirt yet. I want to get one, but I doubt it will be before the end of the FCON. The second game was probably a little bit uh, name-wise a better one. I mean, both matchups today were, I mean, Mali is a decent team. Cote d'Ivoire also has a kind of, kind of some clout. And Ghana and Tunisia, yeah, those are some heavier weights. I mean, not the heaviest weights in Africa, but, you know, uh, Ghana has been a force. And Tunisia, um, they are regular... No. 
they are qualifiers to have an occasional qualifiers to the World Cup, which in Africa means that you're definitely in the top uh, five, top ten, somewhere there. And that was a game that I have to say Ghana also dominated uh, most of the time. And for that reason, I wanted Ghana to win it. I think um, as, as with the mali Cotiwa game, at the, at the beginning it was kind of, yeah, no, maybe a little bit more Mali because of the jerseys. But, you know, I don't mind the Cotiwa. I actually like when they go far. Uh, but, you know, because of the jerseys. Gotta go. Uh, I, I I was there more with Mali in the Ghana Tunisia matchup. Um, yeah, I also like the jerseys of Ghana a little bit better. And yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe Ga I like Ghana a bit more than Tunisia. Uh, but you know, Tunisia was my first time that I was in Africa, so that I will always hold a special place in my heart. I was disappointed with the jersey matchup. I thought Ghana will play in their red home jerseys and Tunisia will play in white. Nope, it was exactly the other way around. Uh, I do like those white Ghana jerseys, I gotta say. Uh, however, I thought the other way around, I at least would have the jerseys red because I have a red Ghana jersey, I have a white Tunisia jersey, so it's kind of flipped. Anyway, uh, Ghana was for most of the time the better team. Uh, Tunisia really had a hard time keeping Ghana at bay. And in the 15th minute, I think it was a um, shot by party, hit the post, should have been in the net. Then a little bit uh, later, I think in around the 40th, uh, Andre Ayew scores a goal um, that was wrongly called back. It was beautifully scored with the back heel. But it was wrongly called back uh, because of a handball of Partey. It was not a handball. The goal should, still shouldn't have stood because Partey uh, was uh, in an offside position. Second half, Tunisia gets a little bit more, but really only around the 70th minute when their talisman, Wabi Kazri, comes on, um, who has been uh, missing. I mean, they were clearly lacking... Um, a little bit order in midfield and you know Tunisia they were not all that great in the group stage either three draws um, people call him already the Portugal of Africa let's see uh, exactly when Kazri comes on they have the first big chance and also hit the post uh, the bar I think at this time and then he's again uh, elemental in the build-up to um, what will become eventually a goal as a yeah um Kathleen plays the ball forward gets bounced in the box and it hits kinesi who can put it into net and make it one nil for tunisia gotta say came was at that instance in those five minutes tunisia was the better team but other than that um ghana fully would have deserved to have the lead by now and so, yeah, uh, Tunisia then does what they probably know pretty well, because they organized on the back and let Ghana come. And it seems like all going for uh, Tunisia to, get, to pull out a similar win as the Cote d'Ivoire against Mali. However, this time they gave, an, uh, gave away one uh, free kick too many. It's kind of center attacking half. Free kick comes in and... Just a minute before Kinesi comes off and he substitutes Rami Bedui uh, came on and his first touch he put it into his own net. And I don't even blame him as much as I um, blame the goalie uh, Moes Hassan, who honestly it, he didn't look good in that one. Yes, you don't expect that your uh, that your player is kind of heading in the way this uh, this way, and it was a poor header from him. But I think with a little bit better uh, awareness, because if he wasn't there, there would have been a Ghana player who would have put it in the net. I really thought it looked to me like a goalkeeping mistake. So it goes to overtime. And overtime at the beginning was really, really li lively, which with first Ghana having chances, then Tunisia having a chance, but then, you know, a second half of overtime, it slowed down and the inevitable happened. Penalties for the third time now. And yeah, this time uh, there was a twist to it because in the last minute, um, Alain Gires, the Tunisian head coach, takes off his goalkeeper and puts on... Farouk Ben Mustafa. 
a solid payoff in the 2014 World Cup for uh, the Netherlands. Seemingly, he's the better goalkeeper and Hassan was clearly shaken by that, but you know, had to be talked over, got back on the sheet. And yeah, at first it really seemed like that um, he had a nose for where, where, where to go. I mean, Vacaso's penalty, the first one was almost saved. The Tunisian penalty uh, by uh, Sliti, no problem. Jordan Ayew with probably the coolest penalty I've seen in a long time. I mean, just two uh, slow steps and then puts it high up, uh, makes it 2-1. Khazri, 2-2, two -two, and then Ekuban shot gets saved was not a very well taken one if the goalie guesses the corner it was flat and not even close to the post so yeah it is saved and Bron can step up make it 3-2 and then all the others uh, convert a um, few times Richard Ofori was closest but they were the Tunisian penalties were all well taken I think the one by Bron the third one that was where he was closest uh, but all other penalties are well taken and when party makes it 4-4, you know, Sassi steps up and also one of the craziest penalties, I mean, he just, he steps up and just puts it in, I mean, very coolly and nonchalantly in, goalkeeper has no chance, Tunisia is in the next round and then he's not even celebrating, he's just standing there, yes, I made it. So yeah, Tunisia moves on and therefore we get the following quarterfinals. We have Senegal versus Benin, Nigeria against South Africa, the Cote d'Ivoire will play now Algeria and Madagascar will play Tunisia. And if you look at the three um, very quickly, Senegal, Benin, Senegal will probably move on and I would, I don't know, you Almost got a favor Madagascar over Tunisia, although the, by name Tunisia should go to the semifinal, but either semifinalist will be kind of an, an unexpected one. But you know, finally the North African advantage comes through. Cote d'Ivoire Algeria is a big name duel. Um, Algeria will probably do the Nigeria South Africa. Yeah, also, I think uh, the Madagascar Tunisia is probably the closest one. All the others have a pretty clear favorite, I would say. And it's only the same as when things might become more interesting. But hey, we said this also in the round of 16 and there were quite a few upsets and the AFCON is always good for an upset. Well, let me know what you thought about today's games. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or jersey reviews or others. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.